Hello, my name is Steve Samuel and I work for a company called Design Visionaries. And today I have the pleasure of talking to you about law curves. And law curves are an extremely powerful way, they're an extremely powerful way of creating geometry that follows some equation that you have. So now, how do you do it? I'm going to go to a blank part file and I'm going to show you that the first step is to go to the expressions editor and start defining the equations that you will use to drive the law curve. Every law curve starts with t equals 1. t is a parametric variable that will be used to drive the other equations. Next, I'm going to make another equation that's xt, x as a function of t. And just arbitrarily, I'm going to say that xt is 5 times the sine function times t times 10 times 360. Now what this means is the sine function um, is going to um, oscillate 10 times. Um, it's going to go through 360 degrees 10 times because t is going to be evaluated from 0 to 1. I'm also multiplying that by a factor of 5. That's going to be what happens in the x direction. In the y direction, yt, that's going to equal the cosine. So it's going to be 5 times the cosine, COS, and the cosine of t times 10 times, oops, 10 times 360. There we go. That is what happens in the y array. In the z array, that's z is a function of t, I'm going to uh, say that that is simply t times 20. So there you have it. It's going to be a 20 uh, inch high um, spiral with a radius of 5. And those are the equations that are used. So I say OK. And the next thing I do is say insert curve and law curve. Now the law curve is smart. See, it already knows that the function it's going to be looking for is xt, yt, zt, and I had the wherewithal or the forethought to name it those um, variable names to begin with. I could have used any other variable names and then replaced it in here, but um, I just wanted to make life easy. So now I have a simple helix. And of course a simple helix is too simple, right? If you were going to do a simple helix, you would use the helix command. So now I'm going to have a little fun. I'm going to play with this a little bit. First, I'm going to give z a little bit of a funny um, bump uh, uh, kind of function. So I'm going to say tools expressions. I'm going to go to the z function, and I'm going to add um, a sinusoid. I'm going to add a 0.125 high sinusoid times sine of, I'm going to give it uh, 50 bumps um, times uh, t times 360. I have to multiply it by t because t is the variable that's being evaluated from 0 to 1 that drives everything. And so when I enter that and I say OK, as you can see, I've now given this thing um, kind of a bump. Now it looks, it doesn't look as radical as I want, so I'm going to play with it just a little bit more. And I'm going to go into that z and I'm going to make that bump much higher. I'm going to make it 0.5 inches, and I think I'll give it an odd number, like um, 57, and that'll look a bit more interesting. There we have it. So there's a piece of geometry that if it were not for the law curve function, it would be very, very hard to do. And finally, I'm going to say insert sweep uh, tube, and I'm going to put a quarter inch diameter tube all along this thing, and um, it's uh, very data intensive because that law curve is very complex, so it uh, takes a minute, and um, when this uh, is done, I have a piece of geometry um, that looks really neat. I'm just going to view visualization true shading editor, and it just shows you the awesome power of NX and this system um, and a law curve is something that uh, is really really powerful that you can use to um, that you could use to represent a sinusoid or a parabolic mirror for a concentrator or if you're designing um, satellites there's a lot of uh, geometry that follows equations in that 
So there you have the law curve.